I mentioned before that the NetLogo Models Library has a number of models related to the prisoner's dilemma. This is one of them that we're going to look at now. It's called PDN Person Iterated, and you can download it from our course materials page. This model, unlike the one we've just been talking about, has multiple agents. Here are all the different agents. Each one is playing a particular strategy for the prisoner's dilemma. And here are the strategies. Random, which means e either cooperate or defect at random each time. Always cooperate, this one. Defect, always defect. Tit for tat, we talked about. Unforgiving, this strategy always cooperates until its opponent defects, at which time it will always defect forever. It never forgives a defection. Unknown, there's zero of these right now, but you can actually fill in your own strategy by going to the code tab and seeing the comment that says fill in your strategy here for unknown. We're not going to use that right now. That'll be part of the homework. But what we're going to do is look at, we have 10 of each of these strategies, and we're going to watch them interact. So I'm going to go, I'm going to speed them up a little bit, and you see they're moving around. When they come close enough, they interact and play a round of the prisoner's dilemma according to their strategy. Each time there's a game, you see the payoffs appear next to the agents. You can also see the average payoff for each type of strategy here. You see that defect, the strategy of always defect, is the highest. Second is random then tit for tat, then in unforgiving, and cooperate is the lowest one of all. But if we speed it up and play for a while, we'll see if that actually changes over time. You can make it really fast, and you see that defect actually starts to go down, and defect actually goes down, and tit for tat goes above defect. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to give you some exercises to do in the homework using this model, which will perhaps give you some insight into why these kinds of dynamics are happening. The conclusions that Axelrod drew from all of his tournaments were the following. The strategies that did well were nice. They were never the first to defect. They were forgiving. That is, they were willing to cooperate if cooperation was offered. They were retaliatory, that is, they were willing to defect if others defected against them. And he added one more condition, to be clear, that is, be transparent about what your strategy is, make it easy to infer, so that your partner knows how to react to what you did. It can predict what your next move is going to be, it knows you're going to be retaliatory or forgiving. And these are the conditions which, at least in the prisoner's dilemma context, are what induce reciprocal cooperation in an iterated prisoner's dilemma game. And several people have proposed these as general attributes that strategies should have in the real world for trying to induce cooperation in arms race-like situations. And of course, tit for tat has all these attributes. That's all I'm going to say about the prisoner's dilemma. It's a huge field, actually, with many, many variations. And I've put some references up on the course materials page that will give you a feeling for the different kinds of variations. Axelrod's book, The Complexity of Cooperation, talks about many of them. And some of the optional homework assignments will have you read about some of them.